Lovely to see you so, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's it going? How's the baby? Oh, uh, baby. It's been going so good. Um, it's been like super, super awesome. But um, you know, tiring. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. You you I would know. know. But it does get I better, know. right? So Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This is this is about about the hardest. This the stretch. <laughs> Uh, what's the yeah. age difference? Two, two years. So yeah, that was the same. My, my kids are twenty-two months apart. So was, uh, okay. It, yeah, it's tight. So you had the you had the two under two. So exactly. Yeah. So there's no way around it. It's not done yet. Let me just tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just I'm already at stages where she's like, "Go away." Go away. I want to do my own thing. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I thought that happens later in life, but it's already here. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I just wanted to say, well, just I can't be I can't really be that loud or anything like that, but I just wanted to say like mega congratulations on wow. on the achievement. Cause I was just saying to my wife, I was like, Man, this practice community like this community thing that I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to work it and watching you guys all join and hit milestones so so quickly and then you just like walked in and you just booked a gig and then you played the gig and like dude yeah. it's i'm i'm so grateful for yeah. to have students you like you around yeah i mean what what we said what you put on and what i put on and even others you know on the, the night of the gig and just like it's true like this community was it's hyper motivating for me. I mean, you know, it's just like everybody's encouraging everybody. Everybody's super positive. Everybody's pushing everybody a little, you know, like we keep pushing each other in our own, you know, just towards our own goal. So it's just, it's really cool. Uh, So, you know, I was like, why I was eager to share real time, you know, my posts, you know, update on Thursday night. So yeah. it was awesome. And, it, you know, so this, this community was, you know, I'm super grateful for your personal, uh, you know, advice and recommendation. I did jumping jacks right before. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So I went outside. Did you do it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, you it, know, I got the blood flowing. So just those little things. And, it's you know, crazy. And, and it's then, like, yeah. Yeah. So it was great. And, you know, and for me personally, you know, it, it's been something that I've been wanting to do for years and years and just have not just a one off, but like, you know, as part of a longer term doing that more regularly. But you got to do the first one before you do the doing it regularly. And uh, so for me personally, it was like a, a personal, it was like a peak moment. You know, it was just like, you know, it's it just, I, I guess I was kind of, thinking back, you know, like, you know, many years ago, I, I trained and ran for a marathon and, you know, I like tried for years to do it and I finally did it. It was, it was along those lines, but even more, cause this is so much more personally meaningful the music. So yeah. it was like, I was, you know, it was super stoked, lots of adrenaline, super nervous, definitely super nervous going into it, but I knew the songs and, you know, I've, I've done enough, little open mics or you know little things in front of people to know all right, i can i can pull it off i just got to get through the first couple of minutes so yeah. you know I, I managed to um for the most part you know have a good time doing it it was it was just you know it was, uh, you know i was i could see if i do this enough and enough i don't think is a big number that I'll really get very comfortable with it. You know, I mean, I think there will always be a little bit of adrenaline, I would hope so. But, uh, you know, I get to a point where it's like, just having a good time. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to the next one in three weeks, which is at a bar in my little town. And there's gonna be some friends coming, you know, there's probably gonna be seven or eight people. I didn't want anybody to go to this one. It was just like, (laughs) just like, I didn't need that extra pressure. So this like one, they had a crash and burn. Let's go. <laughs> I, whatever happens, happens. Like I don't know anyone. It's not in my, you know, it's, it's in, it was in Amsterdam. I don't live in it. So it was just like, all right, put it in my backyard. So um, 
and it went really well, you know, in the end, it was actually really successful. And now, so the next one, like I'm looking forward to what I believe is going to be more audience interaction. Yeah, you know, there was a restaurant, people are eating, they're not, you know, like yeah. I gave everybody their space and, and, and actually the manager really appreciated that. She, you know, mentioned that to me, like I was really just kind of there yeah. providing some nice background music and people appreciated it and they went on with their dinner and conversation. And uh, so I'm hoping or looking forward to the, the, the you know, at the bar, it'll be a little bit more. I've been to that bar and it's much more interactive with the uh, music. So I'm, I'm psyched. I have to learn another, I got to get another 15 songs down, which I'm like halfway, I, I need about 35 songs. So I, I got another, yeah. I'm, you know, I've got like seven or eight of them. All right, I can, I can make work and then another seven or eight. I have a little practice. I, I have some work in front of me, but I got a couple of weeks. So yeah. Well, shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, That's so cool. I'm totally still. Well, you can, yeah. you can um, like literally, so tomorrow morning I'll post the, I'm going to start doing like a goal section in the community where like oh, yeah. we all yeah. set our goals because I'm, I'm, I'm about to do the exact same. I'm going to do like a 14 days of country music where I'm just going to learn 14 songs, one every day, and um, nice. do a bunch of posts about it because we've got a big country show coming up here pretty soon. So right. I was like, I'll just fill some holes, learn a couple of banger ones. So you can do the same thing. So each day that I learn a country song, you can, you can post one of your new songs. So, yeah, that sounds good. Because uh, for me, the countdown is here. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's October 12th, that Saturday. I, I, the next event that's that, there's yeah. me october the 11th so. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so good there's going to be lots of extra well, motivation Motivated. that might actually help you as well because we'll play we play on the 11th and i'll live stream it on youtube so you'll watch every single uh, trick that i use to interact uh, with the nice. crowd okay. except nice. uh if it works out quite well there's a I, it's kind of like cheating when people pay tickets to come and watch you i, I found because you, you already get like this free win. You don't have to like convince them that like you're going to do a good job because <laughs> right, they already right. know. They're like, I'm gonna, I've already spent the money. I'm, I'm here to party. <laughs> there for you. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, I want to get to that one day. I don't know. That, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about is just kind of longer term goals or kind of mm. opportunity sets. And, uh, Perfect. Some shorter term, all kind of the, the space on, on gigging and taking this, you know, kind of where, you know, not, not, not on technical music playing, but more on, yeah. you know, kind of where to take it. And I have some ideas. Say, yeah, like how the yeah. blueprint works on how to get it working. Yeah. And yeah. Get the ball rolling yeah. on this thing. But I will say one, the one technical thing, at least that for me, that's worth sharing is, you know, your, your focus on, uh, you know, vocal rhythm and, you know, like guitar, you know, if you screw up the chords, nobody really pays attention. Just like stay on the, the vocal, stay on the vocal rhythm, stay, you know, just focus on the vocal and, and you know, kind of everything else flows. And, and I really took that to heart. I was like, all right, I, you know, certain songs that I'm like, I would have sweated over getting the chords exactly you know, the, the, the voicings differently. I'm like, you know what? Let me just do the basic version of these chords. And, you know, the only one I'll know is me, probably, you know, and, you know, and just focus on making it sound good singing. And, uh, and that really helped. That took a lot of pressure off, if nothing else. So, That's there were, you know, there were definitely songs. And I'm like, you know what? I can play these songs. I, I can use simpler simpler versions of the chords or I don't have to stress too much about it. and that that actually was really good so that nice. made it much easier because I know the guitar parts well enough that I don't you know that it was just I could really just focus on getting the vocals uh, yeah. as, as well as I could um, so and I think I did that so you know nice so and it was, it was very, that's it I was very pleased with that is yeah, the trick. Yeah, exactly. It's finding the essence of the song, and it truly does come down to the vocal rhythm. And then once you've yeah. got that, it's like everything after that is pretty much just an effect. And obviously, we want to make 
every chord come through like as perfect as possible. We want every part of the song to be exceptional. And like, that should yeah. always be your goal is to be exceptional. Um, but to never forget that in like the world is ending, you never lose the vocal rhythm. And that's right. kind of like, if you've got that, you're good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that exactly. So that way, that lens was very, was very helpful. What, what I, what I did experience the most, what I found distracting for me, um, and maybe you have some thoughts on this, is, is more the, the, the physical setup. Like I'm not used to playing. I have little monitor speakers, and I, you know, I'm not used to. We had this stage had really good big monitor speakers. It had, you know, mm. kind of the the house speakers were planted throughout the restaurant, the seating area. So I felt a little overwhelmed by what I was hearing, and I didn't like. It, it sounded like the guitar was tinny, and it was. I wasn't used to it, so it was a little yeah. distracting for me. That was probably the hardest part, is I would be playing parts of songs, and it just, it didn't sound, it wasn't my acoustic guitar sound that I'm used to for you know, yeah. many dozens of hours of just practicing the songs. So it, I had to adjust and just like, just like, well, the, the, you know, the manager said it sounded good in the house, so I'm going to trust that to the people listening through the main PA system, it's it's right. Yeah. But you know, so that was a little off-putting for me, and I, you know, so I did want to discuss that with you, and you know, and even if I should get some equipment, or you know, I, you know, you've mentioned like just I, I didn't bring any. I brought my mic, my mic stand, and, um, but then the rest I just used the house mixer. They had a yeah. you know, large mixing board. And, and everything else from the house. So if you so did that, the house yeah. mixer, then like that's going to be the first problem. So for me, every venue I go and play at, I always bring my mixer, which has all my sounds dialed in. And then basically I run the output of my mixer into their inputs and make it like a super dry, clean channel. Like I, I balance all the EQs. I make everything uh, like straight, like there's no wow. changes. Yeah, and like try to have as low gain as possible on there. Like I basically make the channel like as low gain as possible because I don't want their preamps to be like amplifying like whatever's going through my mixer. So basically I, I run my mixer. It's I basically treat my mixer as like a, a spot like a Spotify playlist or whatever, you know? So I plug it into their system and then I just turn the fader up once I have everything turned off, like none of their effects, none of anything. And then I just turn the fader up and then I just crank up like the full backs or the front of house. Um, but they, I basically am picking backing off of their mixer, which is not like a common thing to do, but I find like if I want to make a consistent sound and always have like the right compression, the right EQ, not have to stress about it. It's just a thing that you have to think about. And as soon as you're flustered on stage or flustered before the gig and you're like struggling on sound check or you have a really busy day and you don't have the time to do like a 12 PM sound check. Like it's, it's yeah. been a lifesaver, like to the point where I will go to festivals and I will say like, Hey, like they've got like this gigantic, like amazing mixer, like a, that's like a, like an Allen Heath Q, QC, like 24 or whatever they are. I don't know what they're like digital mixes that are ep epic, like four grand or whatever they are. And, I'll be like, so I'm going to plug my mixer in and you guys do nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, the cops were coming by. <laughs> They're like, stop, stop yeah. giving us the goods. Stop giving the goods. <laughs> but, exactly. but the, um, so that's, that was my, that's my trick. So I don't know if it's that much of a trick, but it has saved me so much because the last thing yeah. you want is like to rock up and play the gig. Um, usually they have good mixes, but like, if you don't know how to get like the low pass filter on and things like that, then it's like, uh, yeah. and then they have, they might have like the, like, they might have like a three band EQ that's like analog and it's like limited in where you can pick the frequencies and you have to try and remember, oh, how does my thing work, my voice work with this. And like, I try to eliminate all of that. So I just have my mixer, which is that, um, Soundcraft UI 12. 
Um, yeah. And it, it's like US, I think it'd probably be like three or $400. And that's like the best thing yeah. I've ever bought in my entire life for music. <laughs> Has great compression, great um, reverb and delay. And the EQ is like fantastic. It's, it's got like a yeah. five or six band di- like graphical EQ and you run everything off your phone. So like whenever I'm playing shows, I'll be playing like big like rodeos. There's like a couple hundred people or even like I'm going to be playing like this big con- like ticketed event and I don't really need the sound guy. I can just like go there. I have a lot of confidence on what's coming out and I like, I don't go super, super nuanced on like the perfect mix because I do find that sound like sound guys will typically favor the band rather than the vocal. And like the vocal is the most important thing Um, because if like people can't hear what I'm saying or what I'm singing, it's really hard for them to connect with me and connect with the stories of the songs and know where they need to be so that I can get them to sing with me. Yeah. So I think I, I, I think I'm going to look into this thing because that, that makes sense. And then uh, I do have some follow-ups on that, but like do if, if the venue has its own monitor speakers, does that also get controlled through your, uh, how does that get controlled? Um, most mixes have like their own systems. Like they'll, they all have their own different things. So for instance, with the UI 12, um, you get four output, four outputs for monitors. So it's really awesome. And you can set up your own custom mix in each of the monitors. So when I'm performing, I have my front of house and that's the main mix. And then my monitor mix is more vocal heavy and more guitar heavy and not much bass. Um, and are so you like, bringing your own monitor speakers in this case? Yeah, I, I have everything that is all my own. So very uh, okay. rarely do I like some, some pub gigs that I used to play. Like I did that a pub gig recently on, on Friday. And so for that one, I just bring my monitor, like it's actually my front of house speaker and I just use it as a monitor because <laughs> it sounds really good. And then, um, mm-hmm. and then I just plug into their system, which just runs through the whole venue. Uh, but okay. I, I, I do the same thing. Like they have like their own mixer and then I just plug my mixes, one of the outputs of my mixer into that mixer. And then I just like turn it up <laughs> like it's a Spotify, like it's like the background music. So yeah yeah i'm looking at this mixer the ui 12. yeah this you can actually wi- this, this is wi-fi yeah, yeah so basically like it has its own wi-fi connection and so you connect to that wi-fi and then once you connect to that wi-fi you can now access the mixer and all the settings through your phone or your your ipad it's awesome and you find that uh the not having the physical buttons and knobs is okay. I'm really, uh, uh, I get the best I get thing I ever did. Music. Really? That's yeah. The more confident you get with it, the better you, it's you more like, Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. Cause okay. like I'll be, I'll be literally performing and I will hear, um, something's not right. And I can literally, while I'm on stage, I will be singing and playing and then I will just stop playing guitar and I'll just keep singing the song and I can just like change the levels or whatever that I need and it will work fantastic. Yeah. You don't have to walk over to the mixer or anything. Yeah. I don't have to sneak over or anything like that. And then it also helps because I can also see what the sound engineer, like, so if I do ha- hire a sound guy to work with me, I can see what they're doing. Um, so I can be like, why are they tweaking that there? And then I can understand like, uh, like try to figure out what they're thinking on what their best version of the sound would be. And then trying to figure out, cause sometimes like the sound tech might not know enough about like vocal production. And they're like, oh, I'm trying to get the vocal to pop out, but I'm like changing the levels to try and make it come out. But as soon as you like raise the gain on the vocal, now you're, messing with the compressor and and then it's like crushing the vocal instead of like doing the right thing so like little things like that i've noticed 
like some sound techs are just not that experienced. Well, they're right. not, they're not experienced to have someone who cares. Like they're used to just like, all right, cool. I get paid like, you know, $50 an hour or $60 an hour, whatever they get paid um, where I live. Some of them get like literally nothing. Um, and they're just like, oh, I just got to make sure everything is leveled. They're not thinking like, is the EQ dialed in? Is this guitar like fighting over the vocal? Things like that. It's not, they normally don't want to do that. <laughs> so yeah. I take it upon myself. So usually like at a venue, like I don't, that I'm not used to, I will actually have what is the front of house. So my, my left output on my mixer will be what goes into their mixer. So, and then my right output will be what goes into my fold back. So I'm actually listening to front of house as like right in front of me is my fold back. So I can hear it's not the best version of it, but it is a, it is a, a much better indicator than just me having my own little fold back. I can actually hear what's going through front of house. So I'm like, oh, well, it's this close to me. So it's, it has a different sound. Like the bass frequencies will hit differently and things like that. But I'm also like, as long as the core components are functioning correctly, like my diction in the, in the vocal is clear, then I'm like, okay, cool. Well, right now front of house is good, you know? And the second that I feel like the guitar's overpowering, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I need to tweak this in the mix. So I usually try to monitor in front of house in places that I'm not confident in, but in yeah. a place that I'm super confident, like, like any gig that I play now where I just like, I'm running front of house, like our mix has been so dialed in. We're like super com confident in, in how it sounds. We just like literally, I actually, sometimes we just don't even sound check. We just like literally turn on, boom, and it just, it, it cranks. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. We just got to turn up. But, um, yeah. And that, if you want to record it, do you go through the, the sound craft? I've never recorded any of our shows. So if I record oh. anything, I would just get an iPhone and just record that. Oh. It so just like depends the other on like what your objective is, though. So like, if you're wanting to record it because you want to have like a uh, the most clear version of it, because you're trying to make like maybe like a promo thing. I don't know what you would say, but you can record through the mixer. Lots of people do it. Um, you know, you could put like a USB stick in there. I'm pretty sure it just records straight into the USB. Um, yeah. like the, like two, like a left and right, um, like stereo yeah. signal or whatever. Yeah. But, but personally, when it comes to content, um, like unless you are pro, then there's no real point. Just get an iPhone out and record it. But then even if you are pro, like if you try and do like an overproduced thing and you don't do it really, really well you just you kind of shoot yourself in the foot so if you actually have a lower production the expectation is a lot lower so then if the right. audio and the performance and the the vibe and everything is not at like oh, i'm trying to sell my artist brand blah 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 and you're not actually really really insanely good at that and to be in, to be very good at that like you would have professional videography and you would have like you actually wouldn't record from the mixer you would just pre-record things in the studio and actually have it done properly and then sync it up the song and sing it note to note at the performance. And so you were just kind of like technically lip syncing and then you're just putting in the studio performance over the top. That would be, that would be like, if you were going to do it right to be like a ninja. Um, but and like, like the other day you were live streaming yourself right you were i mm -hmm. saw you post i think it was yesterday or today i forget when but you, yeah yeah you did an extended solo show right and uh how did you capture that so i just live streamed on youtube ah, so you just you, did the, you the setup first. that you shared with me in the past where you, you yeah just you just get your photo. i have an iphone and I just put, I have my iPhone and I just put it in front of me on a mic stand oh. and I just push record. Oh, I just push, okay. Yeah, I, I push go live and then that's it. That's how I started live streaming. Um, I, when TikTok live came out, cause originally I wanted to get into live streaming through Twitch and stuff, um, but it just never worked. And then TikTok came out with TikTok live and I started testing it out and it was like, 
going live on steroids. Like they would just like throw people in. There was sometimes I was playing like that pub gig. There was one time we played that pub gig and there was like over a thousand people in the chat. Oh. And it's like, it was bonkers, but that was early TikTok live. That doesn't happen anymore. They like, they destroyed all organic reach, which is fine. You just got to do the, you got to do the smart streamer strat. But the premise is like, so if you, so say you made your YouTube channel, right? You could just make a YouTube channel, the one that you post, you know, all your videos in the school with, and then you just go live and then you, it will record everything. Or if you want, you just get your phone and just push record and just have it facing you and you can see what you look like and it's all good. Yeah. So that is, that's what I did. You know, I, I recorded it with my, you know, my, the latest iPhone that I have. Yeah. You know, yeah. More than good enough. Um, it got a lot of ambient noise. You know, it's a restaurant. So there's a lot of like clanking of dishes and glasses and people talking and whatnot. So I don't know if, I mean, I don't know how that, I can imagine a bar. It's just as loud. Yeah. Um, is is the reason this question is coming if you're asking about this is because you want to market yourself to other places to get more bookings is that what yeah you're i'd like to be able to show like hey this is what i can do um so you know i'm on it's just kind of a, a clean sounding live performance at a similar type of venue i mean i mean i guess you can get all the crowd in there a little bit of the crowd would be good um, yeah but you know not not to the point where you like it's you know 40 percent of, of the level of the you know it's like 60 40. With, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, amazing so. all right well just just before we like really jump into it just because like we're all, we're pretty much halfway through the lesson i want to make sure that we like get w exactly what you're after and i can like yeah you know, fire around through it all. Just make sure that I get everything that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are some of the things that I wanted to hit. So um, you're, so I'm guessing, so you're like, how can I market, just like, how can you market yourself to get more gigs for one is one element. Yeah. And then like, what are the other parts, components? So I, I just don't want to like, you know me, I can yeah. rant on things. Yeah, forever. so, uh, I, so what, what I have in mind, you know, so, so I'm in a band. I, it's something that I've been wanting to do for many, many years. And a couple when we moved to the Netherlands, I, you know, I found a place that found a band. So I've been doing yeah. that a couple of years, and that was huge for my music. It was like, you know, it was I think I was the singer. So I, yeah, yeah, it was a new role for me to really be in the, you know, in really focused on that. So that helped my vocals tremendously, and then I played Maybe. rhythm guitar. So, uh, you know, my goal with that was, all right, eventually we'll be good enough. We'll have enough repertoire and we'll start playing out if they're interested. We did it a couple of times, um, but not everybody wants to. So I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. All right, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. I love our Thursday nights together, but I'm going to, I want to play out live. So that's where I yeah. started saying. So somehow I connected with you at the beginning of the journey where I was saying, all right, now I'm going to start preparing to play live myself yeah and the band doesn't want to so so i you know it was kind of all at the same time that you started your your the school it's, communities it's fake and yeah yeah it was it was really cool so it was like okay well this this seems like it could be a good fit in the right time cool and you know so now I'm, you know so my goal was you know like let me take six or seven months and build up a a set list and and try and line up a couple places where i know I, where i have some contact and, I, yeah. and that's what I've done. So I, and I did the first one and the next one is in a few weeks and I don't have anything else lined up after that. I basically said, well, let me just kind of see how all this goes, see how I feel, but I can already tell now having done the first one, like I want to do more of this, like this is yeah, super perfect. energized. Okay. I know I can do this. It was just really fun and I want to get better at it. And I don't know where it's going to go, but I want to do more of it you know in my town there's a few venues and then if i were to you know willing to you know go into amsterdam which isn't that far it's you know 30 minutes you know there's a lot yeah. more venues so you know how do i get those and 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 then just to continue that so then that, you know just kind of keep doing that um 
you know, I would love to get to a place where I actually find there's an audience for the kind of songs that I sing, these, you know, seven classics from the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, 90s kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, there's a, a truly a willing audience where they're like, you know, they get people get to know me locally and, you know, I, I could actually sell tickets to a show. It's a kind of a fantasy. I, I, I have a hard time seeing how that would happen. But, you know, I've seen other people do it on YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe. I, I mean, I literally so, just did it so I can like tell you exactly how I did it. So. Yeah. Well, so, so, that, so that's like part of it. Uh, exactly. So that would be, I'd be really interested in hearing your thoughts on that. And then the other path musically for me is I do want to do songwriting. I, I've done it a little bit and I, I've taken a backseat to really focus on getting this live gigging piece going. So this mm -hmm. is my focus right now. And, you know, maybe after another six months or a year of this, really getting it, you know, getting it going and having, having it going, then at that point I might, you know, um, come back to my other goal of do some songwriting. Um, and so, you know, th those are musically what I have in mind. You know, I, would I like to also get better at my instrument? And absolutely, I have, you know, kind of only so much time and I feel like the most important would be, you know, at this point, I'm good enough to do the live, the live shows now. So I want to do that. That will help me get, you know, I'll, I'll fine tune the vocals. I think like improving my guitar will be later on the list, to be honest, at this point. So it's like, yeah. get, get, get the live gigs, try and build an audience, do some songwriting, keep focus on my vocals. You know, at some point, maybe like the bass player, in my band said he'd be interested in joining me. I said, nice. that'd be awesome. I said, you know, let me first like get this going for me and just see where it goes. And, you know, straight and, away they you see know, you said like, you're what you're making it work. And they're like, Hey, it actually can work. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know, I told him and he's like, Oh, I'd be up for something. So, you know, I see him every week. So, uh, you know, I'll, cool. I'll be keeping him posted, but you know, I, I, I see lots of kind of organic, uh, outgrowths of this. Um, so that, that hmm. that's what I have in mind. So I'm curious your thoughts on, you know, yeah. any or all of that. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So the first one is like, you've just done two gigs, how to get more gigs. Um, the first thing that I would always recommend is uh, figure out like what you're like, define the expectations of what you want financially from it. So like, like for me as a musician, silly dog, this possum's outside one second. But, hey, Classic. Sorry, it's like it's eleven p.m. here, <laughs> and Adeline's asleep in the other room. Yeah, I got two sitting right next to me here. <laughs> oh, they're way more behaved than my dog. My dog is. That's my no. audience, basically. Whenever I come to practice, they come and hang out. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So, oh my God. dog, stop, Maggie. Um, so basically. Define your expectation fi financially. Uh, I'm assuming like you're fine with finances, like you've got your own job and everything is all good. Cool. Yeah. So then all you need to do is be like, you're in a season of learning. So yeah. every gig is learning. Do not stress about budgets. Do not stress about anything. Like whatever, like some artists be like, you should be charging this much. Like, like just be like, cool, thank you. And like every interaction you have with the manager, be like, I would absolutely love to play. I'm I'm working to get better. Like, just be honest. Like I'm looking to get better and better and better and better, you know? And you'd be like, I already am very good. And, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to rack up a resume of like experience. Mm -hmm. And then you, they will tell you whatever they've got budgeted for that. And then you will crush the gig. And then you do that as many times as you can. And like, there's a lot of people who are like, Oh, you got to, you know, make the like, like electronic press kits and things like that. Like you can totally do that route if you want, but that's not the thing that gets like the bookings rolling. 
what gets the booking rolling is like when people, when you say I'm going to do something and then you do it. And when venues know that they can rely on you, like there's so many elements that are more important than like the really cool Instagram videos and things like that. It's, do you show up on time? Are you nice to deal with? Do you understand your place at the venue? Like not being like too loud and things like that when it's meant to be a dinner setting. And then also when it's a party setting, knowing how to engage with the crowd and have fun with them. And do you have a large repertoire so that when people are engaging with you, you can then service them, things like that. Yeah. So there's like, there's a lot of things that matter that have nothing to do with your Instagram profile or, you know, your artist thing. Like, cause a bar is not going to make heaps of money because an artist is playing like very rarely, like, like a local, a local artist brand is built on just like you being around all the time and playing lots of shows and people see you at lots of shows. And then they're like, oh yeah. Like every time he's there, it's great, you know? And like recently, like I played at that bar on Friday and the manager was just like, man, we get people coming in all the time asking like, when are you going to be back? When are you going to be back? We haven't seen him in months. Cause I, I took a break completely from bar shows. Um, yeah. Like I, I, I was like, pretty much I just wanted to quit. Cause I was like, it's just too hard, like too hard to do the whole online school thing and content and then be a family man. And then, you know, try to do all the events and stuff. So I was just, I'm super blessed that the events have been like exploding, but that's how it went. So right. if you want to get more gigs, just be patient with it, follow up with the venues and then ask them, hey, do you know of anyone else that you think my vibe would fit at? And then you get them mm -hmm. to recommend other places to you. And then when you reach out to those other places, be like, hey, you know, Maddie over at blah, blah, blah venue, um, I just played a gig there and he mentioned you guys might think I'm a great vibe. And then if they can connect the venue managers and things like that, like you, you use the it's a B2B network. It's not like a yeah. B2C kind of thing. Like a lot of musicians think it's B2C. Like they think it's like, I'm connecting like my business to the customers at the venue. No, it's actually you're connecting with the managers when it comes to like venue bookings. Because if the managers like you, then they will book you. Or like whoever's running the whole, their whole booking process likes you. Like yeah. a lot of booking agents, I mean, I don't know how it is in, in like Europe, but from every experience I've ever had with booking agents, majority of them don't even look at anything. They're just filling slots. Because if you look at it from like their business model, their business model is how can I acquire as many venues as possible and so I can lock in as many artists as possible and collect 10% fee on all those bookings. And that's how, I mean, the people here do business. I don't know exactly how it would work in like Amsterdam and stuff like that. But that's how a booking agent typically would work. They collect a commission on the bookings. And so their goal is not get the best artists there because these guys have fixed budgets. It's get as many venues and as many artists as they can. So like, if you're like, if you've got a pulse and you are tidy and you can play songs and you don't get complaints, you've crushed it. You've, you've <laughs> filled, fulfilled you've ticked all the boxes for them. You've ticked all the boxes of a booking agent. Like, I'm the worst nightmare for a booking agent and I'm effectively one of the best. Like I try the hardest. I have the most like diverse repertoire. I come in with like professional gear. There's nothing like I, I have a standard that is very, very high and that's why I get paid very well to do what I do. Um, but when they're booking me at a bar and it's still the budget's $500 or whatever, like, and then I like have to cancel because someone's going to pay me like quadruple the amount. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter how good I am or how anything like that. I've just created a problem for that booking agent because they have to find a replacement. So I'm not on the top of their list. <laughs> right, right, right. The only reason I go to the top of their list is when I don't play and then the standard starts to get lower because they're booking less less experienced players or less experienced, you know, gigging musicians who show up with worse equipment and don't try and 
they're just there to like i'm gonna play my you know 30 songs and i'm gonna drink and i'm gonna piss off you know so what was interesting i mean you know it was all new for me on thursday after my first after i finished the first set they have an, an unusual structure this this particular restaurant so they you do three sets they but they they want you to do like 20 to 25 minutes in an hour so it's from like 7 to 7 25 and then 8 to 8 25 and then 9 so you, there's a lot of dead time really you know where i'm just kind of waiting. Oh, okay. and uh so after the first set you know i did six or so songs and the manager came over and was really appreciative and you know it, it sounded good she said but she said even more is i was playing you know in a way that was respectful of why people were there people were there to eat and talk and be with each yeah, other one right yeah, that's it and, you know that's that it. was her first statement i'm like and my thought and she even said a lot of musicians here don't do that and and i my literally my thought was really like <laughs> you know and uh, exactly what I, I said in that in that post that's it <laughs> right that's, right no, I, I remember i remember reading that and thinking I guess that makes sense that, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, it's one of those. I was surprised that, you know, that that it's true, <laughs> that it's well, so prevalent. It, so, you know, it was interesting. And then and, and then, you know, they offered me, you know, you know it's a bar, a restaurant. So like, do you want a drink? Do you want only like, just water? Just what do you want some food? No food, just water. And, I, you know, and they're, and they're like, food's really good here. And you get a meal. I'm like, you know what? when the gig is done, can you just wrap up a meal and I'll eat it tonight? Because I'm not here to eat, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, would, I would eat at the venue. I personally don't drink just because it affects my vocals. And like, yeah. I just never ever, I just never ever want to be in a position where I'm like, I made a mistake there. And that's because I decided to have like a beverage, yeah. which is not yeah. fun. <laughs> But yeah. I would definitely eat. So I thought, just don't eat spicy food. Spicy food would get like anything gives you reflux is not good for eating before a gig uh, yeah. or like during a gig. But yeah, so, so it was interesting to get that feedback on the first after the first set only because it was exactly what you said, and I'm like, wow, that was yeah, that was I, I was very I was actually surprised, but um, yeah, but it, so and uh, then after I, the set, you know, she said the same thing afterwards. So yeah. uh, that was good feedback. So and that and that's all like honestly, like it's funny, but it, like these people are trying to run a business. They're not trying to make like the next, you know, Led Zeppelin or whatever. Like they right, don't, right. They don't, so, they so don't care one, about that. So I'm curious your thoughts. So this place, they, they have music on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if the weeknights are hard for me with just because I'm working during the week. So, you know, I actually I took the day off. I had some stuff to do in the morning and I'm like, I'll just take the rest of the day off and I'll get there at five o'clock and, you know, just, you know, just be really, you know, uh, make sure it's all set up properly and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but I thought, all right, well, I won't play there again because it's, a they really only want the solo performers on Thursdays and then they want more bands, bands on Fridays and Saturdays. But I'm thinking, since this the manager said this to me, that maybe I can actually propose to them I'll come a Saturday. I would be willing to come on a Saturday night and see what they say. You know, I'd be interested. Yeah. I, I, you know, I have nothing to lose. Like, but they yeah. don't know who I am. So if you know, if it really was a good fit for them, then I would think that they'd be happy if I came on a Saturday. If they tend to have a typical framework that they prefer, they're not going to change. Typically, they won't change the framework, regardless of like how awesome someone might be. Like, like I, I literally, like I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I remember there was one time I used to play at a bar, and I would play there regularly, and there would be like every time we have to like replace you, it's so hard, and then. And then I was like, I was like, well, well, do you want to like, what's the problem? He's like, well, the only people we can get 
like we'd have to get like a duo or a band and that they don't even capture the level of energy and vibe that you get solo. And I was like, cool. Well, why don't, you know, like how much do you pay them? And he'll right. be like, he's like, Oh, we'll double. Yeah. And I was like, well, then why don't you just pay me that? He's like, well, no, I can't like that's two people. Why not? <laughs> right. Why not? <laughs> I was like, you, just, oh, you, you, just you want to make sure. Why. Yeah. 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 That's kind of, yeah. People so that's when <laughs> so that was a really like eye opening i mean it's not his fault but it was eye opening because i was like oh i guess like i had it in my mind that like you could be so good that you would convince these venues that like they would you know pay more but they just don't so right <laughs> uh, like, that's I good just, to know that like music tick. yeah so yeah. like if they say yes, that's cool. But I would just say like, Hey, how big of a band do you need? And say, you know, I've got a band that I like, we jam a lot with and, you know, we might be able to like bring them around either like a, a duo or a trio, depending on what they're after. Like as long as you get right. someone who can like play a little bit of beats and you got the vibe, that will take a box, but I don't know how big the bands are that they have. Like, I don't know how big the stage is. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, like oh, usually duos oh, yeah. crush. So you yeah. could you could test that. Yeah, that's good. But I would, but but yeah, I I would recommend like look if you're wanting to get more gigs, take this as like I'm in a season of learning, and I need to just play as many gigs as possible, and then like, and if that if that means you just have to figure it out, like you're just gonna have to like, if the weekday if you like for sure can get like good weekdays, then I would be like. And it's something you really wanted to do. Like it's something you want to crush on your in, in your life. I would like optimize whatever your work schedule is to be like, hey, I know on like this Thursday I'm going to have this gig, and then you just you move mountains and you make it happen. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, yeah, that's what I would do if I'm not able to. Yeah, if it's uh, yeah, I I wouldn't even like if you know it works already. Like at this point, you don't have leverage. You know, like you did one good show. And so like to them, they're like wicked, like come back again, you know, but they will want right. the same thing. Yeah. Because they yeah. know you can execute on the same thing. And then if you can do it multiple times, then they'll be like, oh, well, this guy crushes every time. He's very consistent. Like maybe we should give his band a try, you know? Right. Right. And then, and then you can propose the band. Yeah, and then, or they might even just ask you, hey, do you have a band? And you'd be like, yeah, man, I've got a couple of guys who jam, you know, every Thursday. Um, you know, we just, we haven't been looking at our venues yet because we're just, you know, kind of enjoying what we're doing right now. But are you guys looking for a band? <laughs> I'm like, you'd be like, we'd be, more, we'd be willing to trial it out, see how it works, you know? You'd go free, give us meals, drinks, or whatever, and we'll we'll give it a go. You have that, you have that, thing where musicians can't do that musicians would be like like if it's me you're like my worst enemy i hate people like you nah <laughs> but but basically work what you've got if you don't need the money then convince the, the venue be like look um you can just charge me the budget if you want because we're good and we're totally worth it but if you're just like curious to see how it goes let's just do it for free man let's just have a good time i've been enjoying playing here and we would really love to just play so just give yeah. us food um give us like a, you know, a drink tab or whatever. So our friends, when they come here to sell, like come and party and enjoy the night, they can have a good night. So we at least have like a really fun table, you know, you can just like, and then they're like, Oh man, they're going to bring people and there's a band and it's cheap. Oh, you just, right, you just like, right. you, you just, you just make it irresistible offer for them. And they'll be like, mm -hmm. I, I'm keen because, but if you already have the evidence that you know you can do a good job, then it's wicked, and that's how you're going to stack the experience. Like when I wanted yeah. to get my band out there, I had to half half my income because they wouldn't pay the budgets. So I had to half my right. income for like a year, which sucked. Yeah. But then. Yeah then i like 6x or 7x it <laughs> so, yeah, like it uh but that was after that was after like really doing it hard for like a year and a half two years 
of like really like had a great product, but people we just couldn't convince people just because there wasn't enough evidence. So like and where do you get what kinds of events do you get those higher revenues from? Those so typically for where I am, um, the high revenue gigs are either going to be for like corporate functions. So like big like award shows, things like that, that they're hosting mm -hmm. or like a private dinners, things like that. Um, birthday parties, birthday parties are awesome. Um, uh, there'll be, and weddings. So like weddings are a big one as well. Um, so now I just book per night, but like, so a typical pub gig would do like 450 for like three hours here, like 450 Australian. So I don't know, US that's like 300 and 300 bucks or something like that. Um, and then now for me solo, like my minimum fee is 3000. So if any gig, it's like, that's it. Um, and then when I book with then like with, when I book with bars, I just say to them, look, like this is my minimum fee. So if you like want to stick to your budgets, that's totally fine. And if I'm free, I'll just play and we'll keep it there. But if it literally, I have to cancel an hour before I will cancel and you have to be fine with that. Right. Right. And so some venues were like, hell yeah, we know you're really good. And if we can get you for that price, we're totally keen. And so that's how I dealt with the transition of oh, like interesting. stacking, like being able to still play at bars and like still do that and not make them annoyed. Uh, but then also still be able to pursue like higher paying events and stuff. And then again, so the same concept of like with the beginning gigs that you do with the venue managers. Now the same word of mouth was how I did it, which is I would, I would just crush the gig and like, and if, if you're ever wondering like, why is it not picking up? It's cause you're not good. Like that's it. Like it's, there's no like magic pill when it comes to any of like the gigging stuff. It's like, am I not marketing correctly? I'm not doing it's like, it's like, chances are you're just not doing a good job. So for me, big red flags, that I realized I was making big mistakes was I didn't have a band that was doing really well. Um, and I was playing on an electric guitar instead of an acoustic guitar. Stupid. You know, like <laughs> I was like, Oh man, it's like the same. And it's an energizing. Why, vibe. Does that, why does that, what impact does that have the electric versus the acoustic? I mean, I only play acoustic but, uh, you know, for the most part. Because people mm -hmm. see an acoustic guitar and that makes sense. They see an electric guitar. It doesn't make sense. It's literally purely visual. I had, I had, I had venues and bookings being like, well, he's not really our vibe. And I'm like, how the hell am I not your vibe? I'm like literally the only person in this town that's that vibe. And then, uh, it's cause I played an electric guitar. I came back and played on an acoustic guitar, did the exact same set. They're like, holy crap. Yeah. We need to book you every time. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Just like, it's like little things like that, but yeah, it comes like when it comes to the corporate stuff and the weddings, it's usually what I found. It's like, you need to have a great track record and it's really hard to pick up that track record. So you start really small and then you build up. So all the things that I do to make my track record exceptional is literally from the second they inquire, we are so fast. Like we immediately reach out. We immediately get everything that they need sorted. Boom, 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 boom like every step of the booking process, like the sales funnel is so dialed in now. It's insane. We give them free tickets to our, our party shows that we do. Like we, we, we just make it just so fun of an experience before we even play. And then when we play, we crush anything that they want. We make it happen. Like little things like I've got, you know, a professional wireless microphone just for speeches. Um, I shoot videography during my breaks and at the end of the event, we will edit a video and we give it to them. And then that they get like this one and a half minute professional video, like that you would normally pay a videographer like a couple thousand dollars for and they get it for free. And then we use those videos on our socials. So the, the socials that I have, there's very little of me performing. There's just 
a lot of videos of me crushing gigs. Like you watch this wedding video and it's just like that crushed. So mm. not only am I doing the evidence that other people are seeing me play the gigs and doing a good job, but I'm documenting that and then sharing it. And then get, and when I'm sharing it, I'm not sharing it to like, Hey, look at me. I'm doing a good job. I'm crafting it in a way that it gives more value to the customer that I just serve, like to the client. So I'm, I'm editing these videos in a really, really healthy way. Sorry if you can hear Harry crying. Uh, he's, he, oh, okay. <laughs> he's ready for another feed, but um, yeah. So like, that's how you would do it. So personally, it would just come down to like, for my goal is I need to be able to do the least amount of shows and get the most amount of money so that I can buy the most amount of time so that I can build my online bu like business. That is all I'm doing. There's no, no crazy thing to it. It just, that's my whole model yeah. at the moment. And how much of a fantasy versus reality do you think it would be for, I mean, I'm not interested in corporate gigs or, you know, that path, but what I, what I would be interested in is if there really was an audience of people that, you know, like the kind of music that I'm playing, or I could, you know, modify it, but basically that style where they would want to, you know, where they would actually pay to, to, to have an evening of those kind of classics covered for that one. I w so this is your play. If you're trying to do that, play as many gigs as you can, because you need to get mm -hmm. really good experience and then you need to test out the songs. So when, for instance, our one is a country night, like we do a themed country music night and we will play. We've done, I did a couple of them tied with a bar that were like, it was the venues thing, but it was more like a bar show that we just play country music. Whereas just recently we did two of them that were ticketed country only music nights. And then we're about to do another one um, on October the 11th. So the way that came about was everyone that was coming to all my shows kept requesting country music. So I just learned a bunch of country music and then I played all the country music. And then I was like, Oh, it'd be so cool to just have like a theme night. Like, let's just do a country night and I'll just play heaps of country music. And I tested it out and then everyone loved it. And then I just kept listening. Taylor Swift was doing her Eras tour at the time. So I was like, hey, why don't we do a country night? But we'll have a heavier focus on Taylor Swift during that country night. So we did a country night with Taylor Swift edition. And then we did a Luke Combs edition. And like... So we would, and then I did a nineties country edition. So it's like, we did a country night, but we're going to play heaps of nineties country. So like, that's how I would just listen to them. Or you could even ask the people, like, as people start to follow you and like see you at gigs and they, you give, once you've given them a product that is consistent and it, and it, it really does come down to time and consistency and effort. And then, constantly pushing yourself to be better and better and better and better people recognize that and then if they're if you're playing songs that they like you can be like hey would you ever be in you could just ask them hey would you be interested you know it's like there's like the saying of like you know sally sitting on the bench and you're wondering what sally wants to eat like what's she about to eat for lunch and you can like think about it all you want but the best way to figure out what sally's going to eat for lunch is go ask sally what are you going to eat for lunch and that's how your whole like audience will come about people at shows who like what you do you ask them oh what do you like what was the song that you like the most and you remember their name like they you try to remember their names remember their faces because they might be regulars at these at venues i used to have regulars that would come through i would see them at the back of the event like the venue and i'd see them walk in and the second i saw them walk in i was like i'm about to i literally just stopped and played their song I would just like swap straight into their song and then they would hear it and they're like, oh my God, it's my song. And I'm like, yeah, I see you at the back there. And then they like just built a deeper connection. Yeah. Like, and that's, that is the, if you're trying to get into the ticketed space and you want people to follow you, you want to give them something to follow you, but you need to give first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you look at like, you can look at like my community right? Like 
I want to have as many people as I can uh, in this practice community because I just want to play music all day and I don't want to teach. I just want to sing and gig nine to five and I don't want to be like a teacher and I don't want to have to like play in bars and stuff to subsidize my income and things like that. So then what do I have to do? Give is give, 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 give. I make all my courses free and then I try and iterate on a product that works really, really well. And then when I get the feedback from everyone, I ask you guys, I'm like, what worked? What didn't work? I built like a whole community and it failed. No, it succeeded, but it failed in my objective because I'd have to become a teacher. That's why I canceled right. the accelerated community. Right, right. Because it, it defeated my goal. Like I was like, oh, because it was about to work. People started asking and people started signing up and then it didn't work because I was like, that won't help me achieve my goal because I want to write a hit song and I want to get really, really good at music. But if I'm spending like 40 to 50 hours a week on admin and catching up with people and learning songs for them and helping them like just basically teach yeah. and keeping up the one-on-ones, that's not, where's the practice time? You know, where's my family time? So, yeah. Yeah. so it's like every single thing has like a, like a, a level of sacrifice. So <laughs> if you decide you want to like build into a brand that can like get paid more, well, now you have to take on more risk. So you have to have all the equipment. You need to be able to service all the client's needs. You need to know like how to set up really, really quickly. You need to set up a sound check. You need to like organize like all of the liaisons. How can you get their itinerary right? How can you do all those things correct? You just can't rock up and play and sing 30 songs. That's just not how it works. You've just got like this stack of like extra work that you have to do. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. is it worth it? Personally, I don't think it's worth it. If yeah, like if yeah. you if you've got money somewhere else, then it's hundred percent not worth it. So if your goal is to perform and get better, then you just play bars. Cause that's the immediate feedback loop. Yeah. And that is if you get, that is my goal. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, because yeah. if you want to perform I mean I would love to build an audience. I would I would think that would be that would be, I think, the most rewarding, you know, build an audience, get better, you know, it's, it's yeah. implied in that. Um and you know build a local name i guess it was what that would take perfect well then like the only thing that you should do that would help you a lot in that goal um which is also going to tie in with the last thing that you were asking about earlier is be just like literally tell the truth like state the facts and tell the truth is like one of the best things i've ever heard <laughs> but alex almosi so state the facts tell the truth and you literally say, hey, I'm Brad. Um, I want to get into playing music. Um, this is my journey. I live here. And let's see how it goes. And you document everything you do. If you start learning a new song, you jam on it. And you'd be like, hey, if you guys see me at the next gig, I'm going to be at blah, blah, blah in Amsterdam, blah, blah, blah. I see you there. I'm going to be playing the songs to make sure you request it. And then you just like every update post the pictures of you, your setup or post pictures of you like a selfie with the crowd or a selfie at the venue and they're like document this journey because it's like so cool that you'll be able to go back and look back at it and it also builds a bank of people to follow you so they can start to learn your, the story of what you're about and then mm -hmm. you'll be like you'll have the people that will just like come to the like they'll be looking at your instagram and be like oh where are you playing at like you'll post your gig guide of like, hey, this week we're playing at this place, this place, this place. And then, you know, whatever. Or you can make a post and be like, this is my month gig guide. So make sure you lock in these, like, remember these dates. And you basically just document everything that you're doing. And one, it's going to make you really good because you're creating a feedback loop of content. Like, that's the whole purpose, like the way my, you know, community works. You know, you're posting videos, you're getting feedback. You just the act of creating is going to make you better because there's a level of intent that comes behind the the content so yeah. that is how i would do it like you would build a name you'd be tagging the amsterdam thing you would you would like and there's like on instagram you can collaborate with venues like you can tag the venues you can give them content you can be like hey i'm gonna be playing it here and post that if you have someone who's like recording something there and like say the crowd starts singing everything, you can capture that, post it, like had a great time at blah, blah, blah. 
here's one of like the songs that we had everyone singing. And then you post that little video, like a clip of that. Just that's the kind of stuff like you, you tr don't fall into the trap of like, I need to produce something and it needs to be pretty and it needs to be perfect. And then I'm going to get this great thing. And then it's going to sell like to all these venues, right. like these venues are going to want to book me. People are going to want to come to my ticket. Like, that's you trying to trick people and people are really good at like this. It's so transparent. They're, they're being tricked all the time. Some people are really good at it and it works for them. But if you want, if you don't want something quick, if you want something quick, then, you know, I can't help you because I don't know the tricks on being quick. My tricks are like, Hey, deliver good value. Try really, really hard and build actual connection with people. Like there's people who have been, they book me for stuff that like I go to weddings now and like I see the couples that I've already played their weddings for. And it's like, I'll go to a wedding. It's like three people I've already played for. And they're like, yeah, it's so great to see you again. They're oh. never bored. Like, so it's yeah. like, they're like, oh yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you in October when at X person's wedding. And I was so like, what? <laughs> well, no, that, there was one time. Yeah. It was like, I went to this wedding um, like t three weeks ago. And he was waiting for a bride and groom and the brother of the bride, I had already played for his wedding and that's why she booked me. And then at her wedding was a bride that I had played when my son was born. I played at her wedding on that day. <laughs> so I she had a fun story. Yeah. And then, yeah. so she was there. So I was, I was shooting for the person who's, I got booked for and then at the front row was the 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 couple that i've already played for and then i was chatting to the bride and then they the person they were having a conversation with i didn't even know because i hadn't met them yet they're like oh yeah by the way so we'll see you next week and i was like who are you <laughs> like yeah. i'm i'm blah 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 are you playing at my wedding next week and i was like oh my god this is so great to meet you blah blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah and, and they're like, oh man, we love this. That's what about like, marketing. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that is when you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. and then but even further, she was just like, yeah, I mean, it's so great here. Well, it's like going to be so cool to see you back here in October. And I was like, what's happening in October? <laughs> she's like, oh yeah, you're playing for our brother in law, like a cousin's wedding as well. And I was like, oh, okay. You guys know my calendar better than me. <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Is... No, this, this, yeah, this gets me excited for, I don't know where it's going to go, but, you know, I, I feel like this is the right, focusing on these live gigs and just getting good at doing them and, and you know, getting to a point where I get energized and having fun at them. Um, and it gives me a, a reason to learn more songs and, and so on. Yeah. Uh, and then just try and line them up and see what happens. So, you yeah. know, and then become a conduit for maybe my bass player joins me some, and we start trying yeah. something. Who knows? Who knows? So I, that's how I see it. It's like. Exactly. It's like, and like, it, it's just, it is the season of learning. And like the, the thing that everyone especially in the early days. I mean, I do it in other areas. It's just, it's funny in music. I didn't do that in music. I kind of did it when I went to Berkeley, but it's like, it's like, I, I, the health reference is the easiest one because everyone always like is into health sometime at some point in their life, but you try, it's like you're wanting to go to the gym and like, you're like, how do I look ripped like these bodybuilders? Like my business is like a bodybuilder for musicians. Like it crushes, like my product crushes. It is very, very good. But you don't know the, the thousands of hours that it took to get there. The, like I did it, I've done over a thousand shows in five years. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we calculated it. It was a, over a thousand shows now in five years like that's that's sometimes like six shows in one weekend sometimes seven yeah. 
Yeah. Like I was doing that. Like I was pulling up my calendar the other day. It was like to, to everyone on the stream. And I was like, yeah, like it started at 5 p.m. And then it finished at 3 a.m. And then I started the next day at 10 a.m. And then I finished by 3 a.m. the next day. And then I was back in the next venue at 12 p.m. Yeah. And like people were like, how do you get good? It's like, that's what I did. <laughs> And then the more recently, yeah. yeah. And then more recently, like you wanted, you thought that was crazy. I went in January when I fully decided I was like, I'm going all in on content. Like it requires an astronomical amount of work. I was live streaming shows every single day, and then still doing four to six shows a week. <laughs> so that's yeah. ten shows, eleven shows a week performing yeah. so like yeah. when when you're wondering like oh what's it going to take to get to the level of comfort that he like you can shortcut a lot of stuff because i'm going to tell you exactly what i learned i'm learning trial and error because i'm like the people i'm learning from don't really know how to explain it and or they're just not that experienced like i had fantastic professors at berkeley and things like that but there's a reason they're a teacher and they're not gigging they and touring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like John Mayer came and sat down. And if we ever did get someone like that, like I got to learn from Brad Paisley and things like that. But that was like a master class, and we get to sit there and there's like a couple of really great nuggets. But we don't get to know, I don't get to know like every single show Brad went to. And I get to learn all the stories and where were the things that he failed at and blah, blah. Like there's only a very small bite size like yeah. learning that you get from those people. So like you'll get all the shortcuts from me, like already like little shit like that. You want to know the biggest hack? Sense. Are you ready for the biggest hack of every performer? Bring it Buy on. a rug. <laughs> Buy a rug. Buy a Persian rug and every gig you play, you put a Persian rug down. I'm guaranteed like number one purchase, get a nice rug. How does that and work? It's a force field. No one wants to spill shit on your rug. So it stops the drinks from coming in. When people ask for requests, they stand back. They don't come into your face. And you, you create an atmosphere on a stage. So it's like uh, basically anywhere you go, you create a stage. Uh, but you don't have to build anything. Right. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm the most underrated purchase I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But like, I'm not kidding. Like we've had like the most wild country people. Like we're out West. This is the outback. These are like cowboys, like straight up cowboys. Like, and they're just like partying hard and that someone accidentally spills rum and coke on the rug and everyone's like oh my god what are you doing like we're all cleaning up like this <laughs> they're like we're dirtying his rug no like you have your you have your uh safety space yeah it like seriously most underrated thing like if you want to get something and like you rock up at a gig i tell you I, i'm telling you this these are like these little things you rock up at a gig and you roll out a rug and that's where you put all your stuff and you and they're like, oh, wow, like, this is nice. They'll remember it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they, yeah, every yeah, other yeah. Every other musician is, like, rocks up and they just need to play. Like, you're, you're, you're creating food. So. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully uh, that helps. Yeah, yeah, this is all really good. This is all really good, Warren. This is, uh, I'm really appreciative. I'm eager to see how your community develops uh you know i mean it's it um, i i want it to succeed for personal reasons because <laughs> uh, it you know i just get so much from it so I'm, I'm trying to share also and give and i think everybody who's on it is feeling the same way You're yeah i mean like, even caleb active. yeah i mean yeah. caleb won and then Caleb was like, oh, dude, I've already had a lesson. Can I give it to someone else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. It's right. No, I, I, yeah. I, I was looking at that this month like, wow, well, it looks like I'm going to get another one if I continue. Like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> so. No, no. That's exactly, that's totally fine. Like, 
right now, like everyone should be like winning right now. Like this is the best time because I haven't put one ad cent dollar into it just because I've been very busy with family, but you'll see this week, this week will be, um, from this point forward, it will be pretty crazy. And I've got, um, and I'm, I'm pretty much everything we've talked about here. I'm, I'm built, I've been trying to figure out how I wanted everything to go, but basically my objective is to create a music course called like the ultimate musician course, which is, I'm going to give you the tools to create music, play music, and then distribute or capture music basically. And so every skill that I have, you will learn how to do and I'll have it all worked out. And then I will also have on the side how to, you know, create a six figure income as a musician. And then it will be like literally every single thing. And so all be free for every, anyone who ever comes to our community or just in general, who just looks us up and like, it's personally selfish for me because then I never have to answer questions on stream. So I can focus more on practicing and getting better. So then like people are like, Oh, how do I learn how to sing? How do I learn how to do this? How do I make money? It's like, just go to this video. And... Right, right, right. So, but that's pretty yeah. much what I'm going to be working on for the next year. It's just like building the first version of that. And then the next version of it, I'll re-record the whole thing with a video editor and we'll make it like spanking, like, We'll, we'll make it better than any like professional person who's selling some like $500 course. We're going to destroy them. No, mm -hmm. no, we're destroying them because they're very good, but we will can be competitive with a free product. Yeah. That's my dream. Yeah. yeah. Make the education free. Well, I, I know I take advantage of it. So I yeah. appreciate it. No, it's beautiful. Like, I mean, I'm taking advantage of you guys. Like, it's not really free. Let's be real. You guys are putting in the time and you're like my yeah. guinea pigs. And I've yeah, been like, yeah. I've learned, I've learned more from you guys than you've learned from me, which is crazy. So that's, that's how appreciative I am. I, I know there are times where I'm like, I, I want to make sure everybody is like active. So I need to post something like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So we're all, what, what's the, you know, build your own community, like build, you know, that's what you've done. Yeah. Right? You, you, you found a group of people that are really interested in the topic and, you know, yeah. we're all, we're all, you know, kind of creating content to help each other out essentially. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's, it's going to be cool. pretty cool. Yeah. It is very cool. Like watching recently, I, I saw Craig posted some stuff and he's just started getting into the, the posting more recently and he's he's a long-standing student I, he, I used to teach him privately for ages and um watching him now get back into it and he's improving so much faster than he did when he was getting lessons i'm like yeah this is like a no-brainer it's just it's really hard i mean maybe i'm i'm just stupid at marketing which is totally fine i'm totally down to be bad at that i just think it, the concept of what we're trying to do is quite challenging to explain so people like actually do it and they're like oh you know, because like a lot of people, a lot of people in the community have, would spend, you know, hundreds of dollars, if not thousands on education every year, like getting private lessons. And they just like are leveling up just posting. A yeah. Video. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true. It's true. Yeah. So, Quite funny. One, you need to, you need to somehow benefit from that financially in some way at some point so, yeah at some point it will happen like... oh look i don't i i honestly i already i've i finally figured it out i was like every 50 members that join we just raise the price by one dollar and then i won't ever be overwhelmed and if we were overwhelmed then we have the fun the funds to get people to help manage it <laughs> right 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 so well so that's that's the that's the plan but um, who knows? Yeah. Worst case scenario, we'll just all hang out. I'll be here forever. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's okay too. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we just need to get me uh, to the point where I can buy a studio, and put it in my backyard, and then we're good. Um, then there's no no problems. I just will never change. I'll just live stream right. every day. Right. <laughs> Forget that hour commute. Yeah. 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 I'm so I'm so glad I'm not driving home right now.
But I uh, better get ready for bed because it's midnight. <laughs> yeah, it's late. I, I was looking at the time. Like it's been an hour and a half long. So this is I really that's good. It. It, it was a bit of a hang anyway. So, so you called yeah. me at a good time. For anyone else who All gets right. one of these lessons, I'm sorry. So we, we just got so much to catch up. On. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, you have a good night, and I'll see you on at the school. All right. See you I'll on. see you later, man. And congratulations. A huge achievement. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Really, really yeah. appreciate it. First gig is always like, it's a big win, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. I have a good one. See you later. Bye.